Hello and welcome back to Exposing Stories. Uh, we are discussing the different factors that cause aging and today we are going to continue with our last episode's discussion of pollution as a factor central to skin aging. But today we are going to talk about the external pollution. Why is this relevant to us? Because yes, 9 out of 10 of us are estimated to be exposed to air pollution which is the principal form of pollution that is associated with skin aging based on data that we have so far. With almost 90% of us exposed, some of us may not even be aware that our skin is undergoing continuous aging process thanks to the pollutants in the environment. So pollution as a factor that causes negative effects on health is not something that's uh, unknown to us. In fact, pollution related lung damage seems to be among the highest causes of mortality, especially in highly polluted uh, zones. Typically, they talk about the Asian continent having a very high level of uh, pollution related lung disease induced mortality as compared to areas with better air quality. But the fact that the skin can get damaged is probably something that's coming into news, especially with the number of articles coming in, in the last few years, maybe about three to four years. We've had a lot of data coming in regarding how pollution affects the skin. In fact, uh, polydermatosis is the name given to the group of conditions, the skin conditions that can get damaged by pollution. Now, if you notice, compared to the Caucasians, we Asians don't really wrinkle as much. Uh, we don't really have the same kind of photo-aging effects that you see with Caucasian population. And in contrast to them, you don't see Asians or Indians mostly doing sunbathing. We are a covered race. We try to cover up ourselves from head to toe when we go out in the sun. We avoid the sun a lot. And still, we end up having quite a bit of pigmentation issues. So when scientists think about that, they wonder where is this pigmentation coming in from given that Asians are always, Indians are always covering themselves up when they are exposed to sunlight. The fact is that there are certain particles in the air which get potentiated by UV light and uh, considering where we live has relatively high UV index, these particles in the air, these air pollutants can get uh, tuned up or charged up to a very high energy level which can then cause the negative changes that we see typically starting with pigmentation. So like I always say, compared to the Westerners who age with fine lines and wrinkles, we Indians tend to age with pigmentation, which can be seen as dull skin, uh, increased sunspots, patchy pigmentation, and uh, specific areas of pigmentation, especially worsened by hair color use, like the sides of the face, forehead pigmentation, and so on. So when we talk about these particles in the air that can cause skin pigmentation, or skin aging, what are these things that we're talking about? There are several classes of air pollutants that are of relevance to skin aging, but particularly the showstopper is what we could call as particulate matter or PM. Now, these particulate matter are classified based on their sizes. So you have a PM10 particle, which is around say 10 microns or so in size. And then you have a PM2.5 uh, particle, which is usually particulate matter in the air that is 2.5 microns or lesser. To give you context, the human hair is around 50 to 70 microns in thickness and a grain of sand is around 90 microns in thickness. And then there's another class called the ultrafine, which is less than 0.1 microns, uh, the ultrafine PM particulate matter. And uh, this is the most feared as of now. Till now, we were talking about PM 2.5 as being significantly damaging. But now with this ultrafine less than 0.1 micron size particulate matter in the air, the impact on lung diseases and cardiovascular risk is said to be much, much higher. Particulate matter can actually uh, enter the skin through the uh, sweat gland ducts and it can enter the skin because if it is very much oil soluble, it can enter the skin directly and reach the dermis and reach the epidermis where it causes its uh, problems. But also it can come in through the bloodstream and then into the skin because these are very, very small. They can come into the lungs, go into the bloodstream through the lungs because of their very fine size and then reach the multiple other organs where they uh, cause havoc. So what is the impact of this particulate matter on the skin? To give you an example, they did a study comparing the facial skin of women who lived closer to a road as compared to those who lived further down the road. And what they found was that women who lived closer to the road and had a higher exposure to particulate matter had more pigmented spots on the skin, on the facial skin, compared to the women who lived further down the road. So this is a useful tip to check out when you want to relocate next or when you want to pick up a home for yourself. This traffic-related air pollution, what we could call as trap, is also associated with other signs of skin aging like fine lines, wrinkling, 
and also particularly more prominent nasolabial folds or a form of fascia sagging where the nasolabial folds become a little bit more prominent with sagging around the lower third of the face. Now, these all can happen because again, there can be a damage at the epidermal level where the cells become dehydrated. They start accumulating more pigment with visible pigmentation spots. And again, it can go, the damage can go a little deeper into the dermis with breakdown of collagen, breakdown of the support system of the skin with the resultant gravitational sagging. So when we talk about this traffic associated air pollution. So when you talk about trap, it's not just the particulate matter that is responsible for all the damage. In fact, traffic includes other pollutants like polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the PAHs, and we may also know some other pollutants under the name of dioxins. All of this together cumulatively cause damages. And again, the most common impact seems to be pigmentation. And another study found that if the temperature was higher, the level of pigmentation was also more extensive and more deep. I want to talk to you about uh, lion and four bulls. I think you might have heard of this story in kindergarten. But here's a small twist. Uh, this is a lion, the good lion, that is basically trying to protect its territory. It patrols, it, it is taking care of a forest. It's the king of a forest. There are a lot of animals that stay and live under the protection of this lion. And every day the lion patrols the peripheries to make sure intruders are kept outside its territory so that its subjects are living happily and safely inside its own territory. Now, one day... As happens in usual man-animal conflict, a bull strays into the forest, just near the edge of the forest. And the lion sees it. It sees this black bull just straying into the forest. And it uh, roars and the bull scampers away, thoroughly frightened by the lion. Days go by and one day the lion sees two bulls grazing inside his territory. So now you see a, a black bull as well as a brown bull and the brown bull looks a little meaner and when the lion roars, it's not that impressed by the lion. So the lion ends up having to charge to chase the bulls away. A few days pass and then the bulls are again back and this time there is a white bull in addition with really sharp horns and uh, a very, very mean and nasty attitude. And uh, the lion tries to roar. These, these fellows are not budging. Then the lion tries to charge. The bulls don't seem that perturbed. And then finally, the lion has to actually engage these bulls in a fight. And in the process, it gets a little injured. But in the end, the lion manages to chase the bulls away. The very next day, the bulls are back. Now you have a red bull as well, with a lot of energy, with really sharp horns, and with a very, very mean attitude. And then, because the lion has to protect its territory from these overgrazing fellows, it tries to engage in a fight again with these bulls, but clearly outnumbered. And because of the cumulative force, cumulative energy of all the bulls together, the lion gets gored to death by these bulls. Eventually, the story goes on that the bulls take on the forest and think, no more a forest it is. The story is basically very similar to what happens on the skin. So as long as the territory is well protected and there is just a one a single insult then from the environment that is coming inside, the skin is still able to cope in terms of aging. But then with cumulative insults, the defense mechanisms of the skin goes down. Typically, particulate matter are able to reduce the amount of natural antioxidants that's present on the skin. Typically, vitamins A and C as well as E are reduced because of the presence of particulate matter in the environment around you. Something similar happens with dioxins as well. Another example of how two negative impacts become a very large a force multiplied negative impact is where you see the ozone effect. So when you talk about ozone, aren't you puzzled thinking that isn't ozone good? Uh, after all, it protects us from the sun. Yes, ozone, depending on where it uh, is, is good or bad. For example, in the stratosphere, that's the ozone that protects us from the sun's UV. On the other hand, the Earth's surface ozone, what we call a stroposphere ozone, is usually a result of the interaction of greenhouse gases, uh, oxides of nitrogen, nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides interacting with the ultraviolet rays, as well as the heat, the infrared energy, all of which together causes highly reactive oxygen species, including ozone. Now, this ozone can dehydrate the epidermis, go down deeper and damage the dermis, causing structural weakening as well as sagging. And of course, because of the epidermis being hit, pigmentation, sunspots can also happen. So when we talk about pollution, it looks like there's something happening that's somewhere else. And uh, we read about it and we hear about it. But does it actually relate to us? Uh, if you have this thought, simply open Google and look for air quality index in your place. Uh, if you look at the different air quality indices of the various metros, 
you can see that it's almost at an unhealthy level. If you look at Chennai's AQI and our particulate matter presence, and you compare it with a more uh, polluted place at this point, like Kolkata, if you look at Delhi, and if you look at the global uh, pollution indices, you will see much of the pollution is, air pollution is, is usually around Asia and Africa, at this point at least, and you see cleaner air in the other countries. So for us, when we talk about why Asians, even though they are well covered, why do they pigment so much? It has a lot to do with the air pollution around us. So many subgroups of the air pollutants causing damage to the skin and to the body in terms of aging, in addition in terms of multiple other health concerns itself. Uh, what can we do to prevent or protect ourselves from air pollution? Well, I think at the policy level, a lot has to change in the way waste is managed, far from it being mismanaged. But also the individual contribution in terms of avoiding single-use plastics, recycling and reducing where possible. All of these also make an impact on air pollution at large. The second thing is choosing and using a diet that's high in antioxidants can do a daily repair of the damage that is caused because of exposure to air pollutants. And of course, the habit of using sunscreens and barrier creams to protect yourself from the environmental damage all play a role in preventing skin aging. Now, we do have an internal reset hormone that can, to a big extent, um, undo the damage on a daily basis. Studies have shown that your own melatonin that is secreted in your body can work on the DNA repair almost on a daily basis and can work against the aging negative effects that are caused by pollution. So where do we get this miracle hormone from? We'll talk about that in the episode to come. See you soon.